Hey, thank you so much for watching. I'm Pippi Peterson. You can connect with me on my website at pippinings.com and also on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. So doing an energy audit to determine your daily usage of electricity and your electricity needs is kind of the foundation that you should build your PV system setup on. It basically determines how much electricity you use every day, you know, according to what appliances you use, and it will tell you how many solar panels you need and how many batteries you need to get for your system. To start, we'll list all of the appliances that we use that draw electricity. So I've got my blender, crock pot. So I added in DC lights and DC lights LED because I use a mixture of the regular incandescent bulbs and LED just because I don't like the look of the LED alone. So you're going to want to definitely make sure you get the different wattages or specs for each of these. And then also include your inverter because that's definitely going to draw some power on its own. Now you can go look at the labels on all your appliances to look up the amps or watts listed. My blender has 11.5 amps and that's AC amps. How do I know it's AC amps versus DC amps? Because it has a cord like this. DC appliances will have a cord like this. The next column on our list is DC amps. So how do I get AC amps to DC amps? Just multiply your AC amps by 10 to get DC amps. So I'm gonna multiply 11.5 AC amps by 10 to get 115 DC amps. Now I can record that in my audit sheet. Next up is my crock pot. It's got 170 watts of AC power. So how do I get AC watts to DC amps? From AC watts, just divide the number of watts by 12 to get DC amps. So I'll divide 170 AC watts by 12 to get 14.2 DC amps that can go in my audit sheet. Do this for all your appliances. What if you have DC watts listed instead of AC watts or AC amps? Well, just like with AC watts, dividing DC watts by 12 will also give you DC amps. And hey, if it says DC amps listed on your appliance, well, that's what we're trying to get. Next, you're gonna calculate how many hours a day that you use each appliance. So I'm not using my blender for more than like one minute a day. So I'm just gonna put in, so that's 1 60th of an hour. So I'm just gonna put in 0 0.02. Estimate the hours for the rest of your appliances. Then multiply the DC amps by hours to get amp hours used daily for each appliance. Sum up all those amp hours to get your total daily amp hour usage. You may need to do this for different seasons when you use more or less appliances, but use the higher usage calculations to plan your setup. According to this electric audit, roughly 100 amp hours are used a day. For a battery bank to cover this, it'd need at least twice this amount stored in batteries because you don't want to let your batteries get lower than 50%. To allow yourself to use 50% of your batteries, multiply your daily amp hour total by two. If you want to treat your batteries even better and only use the top 20% of your batteries, multiply your total daily amp hours by five. How many panels are needed to suit this audit's load? Each day, the batteries would need to receive 100 amp hours. A 120 watt panel will produce roughly 50 amp hours of power each day. So this load would require at least two panels of approximately 120 watts each. On cloudy days, however, when the panels aren't working as efficiently, you'd need to use your generator to recharge what the panels can't or get another panel. Thank you so much for watching. By the way, this is video four in a series of four, so you should definitely check out the first three videos, which include information on PV slash solar panels, 
charge controllers, inverters versus converters, AC, DC, batteries, lead acid versus lithium ion. So there's a ton of information that you can pair with the information from this video to really help you get set up and established and planned for your own PV system set up on your RV or wherever else it may be. So anyway, thank you and uh, join me on the RV Living Forum at my website, pippinings.com, where you can also get your Keep It Simple bumper sticker. And until next time, keep it simple.